Thank you very much, Parham. Again, my name is Todd Helfrich, VP of Ativo Networks. Um, Ativo, just real quick, Ativo has been in business since 2011. Um, we focused on product, uh, we productized in 2014, began shipping. Um, as you can see by the awards that we've received, there's a number of uh, industry recognition that we've received through the years. Um, and 2018 is already starting to uh, play in hand. Okay, so I get a call from Parm and he says, Todd, we're doing these lightning talks. Um, Want to see if you can participate in an event on 314? I said, sure, happy to help. Um, what are you looking to do? Educational briefing, eight minute speed talk, right? I had a former coworker that's a New Yorker that speaks really fast. I'm gonna try to do the same thing to make sure that I'm giving you good information. But ultimately he says, hey, educate us on the problem statement, I'll talk to us about deception, and why can the TiVo to help? Perfect, happy to help. You're gonna break a leg, go do it. Uh, so my, uh, my New Year's weekend was spent in, in a hospital getting uh, my leg repaired, but not because of my evening activities, because of my day activities. Um, so the challenge that we face, uh, Rob Karras uh, did a great job talking about how he breaks into accounts as, as DHS, breaks into agencies, and it's through credentials. Well, over the few, last few years, and I've got a few slides from Information is Beautiful, which I was introduced recently, um, it does a good job at articulating all the compromises that have taken place um, over, you know, it goes up to 2017. Uh, but as you see, these are credentials, these are uh, data sets that have been breached uh, within these organizations, and they continue to grow. So we've got a drastic problem that we need to solve. And this is compounded um, by the fact that we have a depleted uh, security skill set. And I know that we're going to have a panel that's going to be talking about that in financial investment shortly. Um, then from an attribution perspective, we have organizations, uh, we have brilliant folks out there. So public sector employees are going to private sector um, and vice versa. Very few are coming from private sector and going to public sector, I might add. Um, our security operations centers are, even though they have the, the talent workforce shortage, um, the analysts are running into fatigue where they're not challenged and quite frankly they're getting bored by the number of events that they're having to manage. Um, organizations today are still trying to mature the threat intelligence capabilities and as uh, from a phishing perspective, you know, the adversary is still getting in and a lot of times that's because of our end users and their fear of missing out. Um, we also have this complex defense in depth security stack that we are continually having to manage, manage rules, and in some cases I've talked to customers that have a firewall rule within their enterprise, and this is in the government. They have a firewall rule that is any, any, um, which shouldn't be in place today. Um, and then maintaining compliance or checklist, I actually had a meeting with a CISO within the last two weeks who said, Todd, I have my vaccines, my health check is good, but I still have a challenge. And the challenge is this, the adversaries are targeting, targeting all of us, and they are still getting in, it's proven. So um, I'm gonna to refer to a number of topics. One is active defense. Um, our industry, Ativo Networks industry, is re commonly referred to as deception technology. So I appreciate the gentleman, uh, table number four, that asked uh, the deception question, because that was a great tee up for me. So what's the benefit to deception? We can. Um, deploy decoy assets within an enterprise that ultimately allow us to attract the adversary. During that process, we're able to pick up pieces of information about the adversary's tactics, techniques, and practices that can be utilized in automation, creating efficiencies from a, we're moving from events to incidents uh, because we know the adversary's in. In fact, uh, I'll have to talk to Rob afterwards. I had a customer that's actually doing a POC with us specifically prior to DHS and CATS coming into their facilities. Um, what's the benefit? We can quickly identify the adversary's movement within the enterprise and harness that information for the SOC and the incident response processes. So how does Ativo do this? Um, what we're essentially doing is whether you have applications that are in the cloud, whether you have application systems within your enterprise, we are able to replicate your gold disks, your servers, your active directory, um, but also you know, applications and services. And um, I think unique to us is from an ICS and SCADA perspective, we have services and systems that we can replicate. Um, from a user data perspective, there's things that we're doing not only in the decoy systems, but we're also doing in, um, in production assets. 
So as you look at deception, there's a multi-threaded um, agenda. It is replicate your servers, your desktops, also augment uh, fictitious information within your, um, your workstations, your production systems. Um, if when a system is being compromised, a lot of times Mimikatz is being utilized to assess what's in memory. Memory could include things like SMB shares, uh, cookies, logins, and credentials that ultimately that adversary is trying to harness. So as they're going through their lateral movement and getting to that server that Rob referenced, they now have information they can utilize. So what we're doing is we're planting some of those cookies, and I refer to them as breadcrumbs, inside of the production assets. So ultimately we lead the adversary to our sandbox. Um, so here's a rep representative example where in the orange on the left, um, the adversary picks up one of our uh, credentials, util utilizes it inside of a decoyed asset, and all of a sudden is quarantined in our advanced sandbox. You'll notice a sinkhole on the right, where if the customer chooses, they have the ability to connect via DSL link, so that uh, command and control still exists for that malware, and additional intelligence can be captured. Um, what security technology, uh, many of them today, um, to include a TiVo, has third-party integrations. These third-party integrations help with efficiencies. In our case, it helps from an incident response perspective. As we are capturing uh, the IOCs of the adversary and the TTPs of the adversary within our sandbox, we're able to uh, share that information with third-party technologies. At the perimeter, we can block external infrastructure that the adversary is coming in on and also communicating on outbound. Um, at the endpoint, we can take a malware hash and deploy that into uh, an endpoint solution for remediation or blocking. Um, here are a few quotes um, that we've, uh, actually you'll see all of them are 2018 that have come out as it pertains to deception. Um, we were um, cool vendor, we received a cool vendor award from Gartner in 2016, and they have, they do not have a uh, magic quadrant yet for deception, um, but they are following uh, dis the deception market heavily. And in uh, about an hour and a half, we are going to have a uh, talk at table three about migrating your IT to the cloud. Hopefully that was helpful for everybody. I stayed within uh, seven minutes and 20 seconds. So thank you very much.